What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's fish tank's bringing it to you, and you, and you, and you, on a Thursday night, baby. Hope everybody is doing freaking well. I'm going to rip it tonight, folks. We are going to lay into it, and I'm going to bring some knowledge. I'm going to keep it real high level on the bacteria and the bio load stuff, but I just want you guys to get it from a high level, because if you can get this simple-ass concept from the beginning, you will be so much better off. Your life will be so much easier. It's all about making planet tanks easy and just fish tanks in general. So this is for all of y'all. Might be some basic stuff for some of you, but might be some really good info that you might want to keep your hands on. So here we freaking go. Bacteria, bio load, and balance. A pow to you. Can you tell I'm fired up about this? I've been fired up about this all day. Here's what's up. This story starts in Findlay, Ohio, when there was a 14-year-old boy who's uh, had a little desk in his room, and on that desk he had a five-gallon aquarium. This is me I'm talking about here. Five-gallon aquarium, pink gravel, pink gravel. Like, like it was like that cool, like, 90s pink that, like, the dudes could wear. Like that, you know what I'm talking about? Like, not like the feminine pink, but like the dark, aggressive neon pink, if you're feeling me. And I had, like, specks of, specks of black uh, gravel in it, and, like, it was, it was cool. Trust me. It was cool. I had a five-gallon aquarium. And what I did is what everybody does. And, I mean, look, everybody on here has killed some fish. We've all killed fish. I had a five-gallon aquarium. And what did I do? I took that sucker, and I went, and I got myself one, two, three, four, five, maybe even six feeder goldfish. And I put them in there because, yo, when you're 14, all you got is 27 cents. So you go out, you buy yourself some feeder goldfish. And I put those feeder goldfish in there. And I fed them real good, and I never changed the water, and I don't think I let the cycle start, and I killed four out of six of them, and they died fast. And I just remember, I remember, I, I could, like, draw that for you. Like, I remember, like, looking at them and being like, these fish are sick, and I'm doing something wrong. You know, God forbid I would have done a water change on them and helped them all out. I, like, maybe tried, like, two, two cups, whatever. So, we've all killed fish. This lesson goes way back 20 years for D, and I'm going to share it with you all. And I've got some custom diagrams for you. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about bacteria, like basics of the nitrogen cycle, and then just like how to use it to your advantage, folks. Use it to your advantage and have a good look at tanks. Here we go. I did the same thing in my 220. 220 was set up. I got a bunch of rainbows from upstairs. I took the, some of the filters from downstairs. I, uh, I added like all the rainbows to like a newly established tank. I also had it newly dirted too, so there's a lot of things going on. But yeah, I got sick fish too. Like this, you know, this happened. That was what six, eight years ago. Got some sick rainbows, doing stupid stuff, rushing it. So here's what's up. This is what's up tonight, folks. We're gonna be doing a lot of this ugly little diagram, but you know what? It gets the point across. Okay, so this is your standard aquarium, and people do not see the bacteria. Okay, you cannot see it. All right, so I don't know if that's why it gets neglected, but like. Bacteria is so epically important to everything we've got going on in our aquariums that I really want you guys to like do it. So I'm going to use blue as our wonderful representing our bacteria in here. So you will not be able to see this in your aquarium, but I want to just talk about how it's going. Blue is the nitrifying bacteria, converts the ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. And then on a nitrogen and we're out the tank. We're good. Nitrates are less harmful fish. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but so blue is the beneficial bacteria. So here it is. This is the two-day-old tank. Now, bacteria grows exponentially, but well, this is all the bacteria we got. We got like six little blue bacteria, okay? So what it happens? What do people typically do? They got they get this new tank. They're like, I'm all excited. I got this new tank. Let's get some fish. Well, it's a five-gallon tank. Let's. It's Well, it's a five-gallon tank. I'll get five one-inch fish on the fourth day. I'll be straight. So here's the problem. Now you got five fish. I don't care how big they are. Maybe if they're neons, you get away. But even then, neons are more sensitive. You got five big fish, but you only got like a tiny little bit of bacteria. Now, bacteria grows exponentially, but it's also really, really small. So, like, it takes a while for it to go. So you're like, well, I'm going to get this one inch of fish, and I got five gallon tank. I'm going to five inches of fish. It's been set up for four days. It'll be good. Sure. So you add them into the tank. And then what happens? The new new fish are like, oh, well, I eat three times a day. Shit, let's feed them three times a day. So let's feed them. Let's just, let's, let's feed them. Let's, let's, let's. Let's power feed them. So we go ahead. We're going to power feed them. We're going to grab his flakes. We're going to throw it in here. We'll feed them three times a day. And then what happens? They poop a lot. Because fish, the more you feed them, the more you poop. And here's what happens. Yeah, obviously the brown is the fish poop and the waste and the ammonia or whatever. 
there's not enough bacteria here yet. Okay, this fish poop cannot, you know, it does. It's not going anywhere. There's no bacteria to break this stuff down. There's nothing happening with this. It's a poop fest, and the fish. How you living, bro? Where you living, bro? The fish are living in their own waste. Now, look, I'm being graphic, talking about toilets and sitting there taking a dump and smelling it. Listen, as humans, at least we can walk and get out of the room. Fish got to swim with it, okay? Again, fish right here, going to the restroom. Too much fish. Now, look, this this diagram is relevant way down the line in your aquarium, too. So just because the bacteria is small in this one, this is the new aquarium. This could be an old aquarium where you just overstock the sucker and you don't have enough bio load to take care of it. So I really want to hammer on this because you don't have enough beneficial bacteria to break down the waste. Your fish are going to be living in their own feces and die. Think about it if it were you and you had to live in the toilet after somebody took a dump. Not even your dump. Imagine that. How you living, bro? It's gross. And that's why fish die. They live in their own waste. They get, you know, ammonia builds them. The balloon dies. The balloon was the name, by the way, of my first goldfish way back in the day. And I allegedly I was really upset about it. I do remember it dying. I don't remember being that upset, but my old man tells me I was upset. I know it was buried on the side of the house. This is a big deal. So the balloon died when you feed too much and you have too much fish waste in your aquarium. So how do you do it? What do you do? What do you do? What did you do? Okay, so bacteria growth is exponential. The blue is good bacteria. So this is week one. This is how much bacteria we got. And then we go to week three and we see, oh, hold on. I couldn't see it. We're staying here. Week one and then we got like week two. We got like a little bit more. You know, week two, we're rolling. We're like, all right, cool. We got, you know, we got double the bacteria in two weeks. I'm, I'm completely freestyling this, this growth. But I mean, that's, that's generally how you want to think of it. Like the longer you wait, the bigger the bio load, bio uh, bacteria is going to work for you. So week two, we got double, right? So we're, we're good. We're way better off two weeks than we are after one, which is why I tell people to wait like a month before adding fish. But anyway, then we roll week three. Now we got all kinds of this blue bacteria. We're loving it. We're loving it. And then what do we do? We add a couple of fish. And it's Akuna Matata, baby. It's no worries. It's like the Lion King says, Akuna Matata means no worries for the rest of your days. As long as you don't add more fish. There it is. It's simple. It, this is this this simple, 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 like done in photo, whatever, like is is if you can understand this from a high level, you will have great, great, great success. So I'm going to dive into this more, but this is the basics. You want a huge bacteria bed for your fish waste to break down okay and then you want a light fish load notice i didn't put five fish in this aquarium at this time okay i got a lot of bio load or excuse me a lot of bacteria and a light like waste producing bio load okay means no worries you lightly stock your tank you have a good bio load you're good we're going to dive into this more but this is very very basic very very elementary but there's a lot of problems that can be caused beyond this now look i want more than two fish just like you do like i want to look at a tank full of fish but you got to go slow you got to take your time so we're going to roll beyond this here and this folks is the perfect setup can you tell it looks perfect right because what do you got you got a huge bio load and then you got these plants plants eat npk nitrogen okay so you got the fish the fish takes a dump it's ammonia nitrite nitrate breaks down nitrogen comes out feeds the plants Okay, there's some steps between fish poop and plant food, but you get the idea. This is the setup right here. You got two, you got a whole ton of fish, or excuse me, whole ton of plants, not fish, whole ton of plants, very, very light fish load. That poop doesn't matter. See the poop? There's so much bacteria. You know, like think of it like this. You can't see this in your aquarium, but this is how it like has to look, has to be in your tank. Very, very light fish load. Lots of plants you're rolling. This is the diagram breakdown here. You guys have seen this before. You want to get, you know, this is the breakdown: ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, nitrospira, nitrosoma. Notice the plants down here. Uh, this is so overlooked down here. This part is so overlooked in everybody's aquarium. And I'm gonna say, t uh, I'm gonna go ahead and and go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna tell you that the better condition and the better substrate you have, and I'm talking dirt, I'm talking like in a mono soil, I'm talking the good stuff on Brightwell that I sell, um, like. All that stuff, the better your substrate, I am convinced that it's beneficial to your bacteria and you have a better bio load because of it versus like a gravel substrate. I'm convinced of it. Like the porous, the porous bright wall stuff that I sell, you know, it's all about surface area. So I'm convinced of that. I don't have any scientific data behind that, but I'm convinced the better your substrate is, the better your bacteria bed, your bio bed will be in your aquarium. And notice the plant here, the plants absorbing, taking that nitrogen off of these folks. So that's a simple version of it right here.
Okay. I'm going to talk quickly about aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic oxygen available in the area. Anaerobic, no oxygen available. It's underneath the gravel. Okay. You, you have both in here. Um, we primarily play with the aerobic bacteria because it needs an oxygen. Now, what it needs is it needs water movement over it. This is where a lot of people get hung up, and I'm going to talk about this and how to kill your bio load in a little bit. But you want that water flow. You want that water flow. You people setting up the dirted tanks with that two inches of dirt instead of one like I tell you to do, you get the anaerobic conditions there, and you get the sulfur coming up from the bottom or killing your fish. Okay? So you want to be light there. Anaerobic, no oxygen. Aerobic, oxygen. Moving on. This is how it breaks down again. Boy D is going to get a drink. So we're here. Everybody's got this. This is simple. This is basic stuff. But if you can really get this from a high level and understand how this works, it's going to make your life easier. So we're going to move on here. Plants love the nitrogen. Okay, you never really, if you've got hardly any fish at all in your planet aquarium, you never have to worry about nitrogen. I never dose nitrogen. I think that's crazy because it's produced as a byproduct from the fish waste. So plants love nitrogen. Okay, so if we can feed them nitrogen and we can have a balanced tank, we're money. So if we can get that bio, we can get that fish level right and that bio load level right, that's going to feed our plants. And we're going to have this nice little triangle of happy fish, happy bio load, or happy bacteria, and then happy plants. It's a little three-way. Boom, boom, boom. Goes all the way around. So we go from here. The perfect setup. Again. We've got our plants set up. We've got high amounts of beneficial bacteria, a lot of plants, and a light fish load. Do yourselves a favor. Consider how many fish you have in your aquarium. My own 220 next to me, right there. I like intentionally I'm going to run neons because I'll have even lighter bio stress or bio load on my aquarium. Like it's all about that. It makes your life easier. If you want a low tech tank, look, I would love to have like a bajillion fish, but it just is more, more work. And we're going to talk about work here in a little bit. Light fish load, heavy plant load, you cannot go wrong. I was going to do some yin and yang diagrams, but I ran out of time. But basically like your yin and your yang is balanced, right? And you got the little like little teardrop curve things. And then, like, if one gets out of whack, you're done. Like, you have way too much fish, and you don't do the work, you're, you're out of balance, and you're done. Now, the other side of it is if you have a lot of beneficial bacteria, you can get away with a light fish load, and you're good. So the other side is okay. But didn't have the creativity, creative ability to uh, pull that together for you guys. Here's a simple rule that I like to run with, okay? Everybody wants a rule. Forget one inch of fish per gallon of water. How about this? How about one inch of fish for every foot of plants you have? How about that? Take that. Boom. One inch of fish per 10 to 12 inches of plants. Now look, obviously a, a one inch, you know, goldfish has a wider body and it's going to have bigger dump. Goldfish are pigs than like a one inch something else. But you get the idea here, okay? And then plants are all different. But as a general, simple, simple rule, if you want to have success, think about it. You got like 20 fish, you better have a ton, 20, you know, like 20 foot you better have 20 feet of plants yeah and that can be like you know sag and stuff and more of it or whatever but you get the idea and i'll talk about some at the end here with some questions but then we got bacteria examples anybody know who this is anybody know who this is anybody here no i want to see i'm gonna look at the question anybody know who this is no what's this dude's name no it's not gary come on anybody know who this is Santa, Dustin in 50 years, good questions, Caddy, Santa Claus. This guy's name is Tori Brown. He's got Underworld than me. 
he's got uh, fish tanks that are set up. All right, so I went to this dude's house out in Denver. The tanks are insane. He says if you have over 100 aquariums, you need to be committed. So he's never actually counted his, which I believe. I mean, I would like to count them, but he's got a lot of them, and they are packed in there in his basement, and it's awesome. He has aquariums that he has not done water changes in in 15 years. Now, to be fair, he does have a slight drip system set up, so it's a little different. But nonetheless, his bacteria is on point. And how does he get away with it? Well, I, I couldn't. It's, it's from This is a still from a video, so I couldn't pull it out. But he has coffee cans, the plastic ones, the red Folgers ones, filled with gravel. The gravel holds the beneficial bacteria, and he has them either on a uh, glass bottom. But he has to have that there because that's where the bacteria live. If you didn't have that, you'd have problems. And some of you gold and silvers know I had that problem with the 10-gallon that I had to – actually, I did a tip on YouTube about that. So you got to have that big b barrel of gravel in there. But here's how he rolls with all of his tanks. This is his angel tank. I mean, tell me you wouldn't want this tank. Now, look, I think the plants are kind of ugly in here, but look at that fish load and look at that plant load. It's no accident, folks, right? He's got a ton of moss. I think he's got some duckweed floating on here. Um, and this is really how you want to roll. You want to have a ton, a ton, a ton of plants, and you want to have a light fish load. He gets away with the high fish load because he's got the bacteria dialed in. He's got an easy system. You know, I mean, his fish, those are, I mean, those are some beautiful angels. By the way, as always on a webinar, anybody who buys plants from DustinsFishTanks.com gets $20 worth of free plants with your order. You have to put it out in the comments that I was on the 3-3 webinar, and you will get $20 extra plants thrown in. So this is how he rolls. Another fun thing to do here, and I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but I'm going to talk about this. This is the uh, a trick you can do. This is a pothos. If you want one of your $20 for the free place to be this, I have this exact plant growing out the top of my filter. So if you have fish that eat plants, but you still want to remove some of those nitrates, you can put plants out of the top of your filters. Tory Brown does this in so many tanks, and he's got like crazy sprawling plants growing all over the place. I grow these out the top of my tank, um, and it, they A, look cool, and B, do you good. So it's a double win there. So see that coming out the top shove right in the filter pothos i think is how you say it pythos pothos i'm not sure but i've got some of this exact plan if you want it thrown in your order put a note in the comments please how you screw up your bio load story time again you ready okay once upon a time i lived in boca raton florida um wife moved up to kentucky i was hanging out by myself chilling with my fish tanks shocker and I was like, all right, it's Sunday. I'm going to just scrub this tank. So I took the old 125 here. So this is a year before this. And I took out 50% uh, of the water. And I took out both the filters because the filters were looking nasty. And I took out both the filters. I had the Whisper. Actually, I'll show you them here. I had the uh, I had the Whisper 60s or whatever. I know this was the Whisper 3. It's now the 60. I, mean, I hope they still make this because this was a good filter. I had two of these running. I took them off of the back of the aquarium I took out the filter pads I ran the filter pads underneath the water I ran the, the actual unit itself underneath the water in my sink and I scrubbed the piss out of them and I made them look good and I made them sparkle man sparkle changed every single pad in the whole thing and I killed a crap load of fish by cleaning my tank too much by doing what I thought was good I killed all of the beneficial bacteria because chlorine and chloramine is what they're using these days, but chlorine, chloramine, whatever, is made to kill bacteria. So when your boy D takes a sip out of his big cup like this, I don't get the nasty bacteria coming around Kentucky because it's got the chlorine in it, so it kills that. But it doesn't care, okay? And it killed all the beneficial bacteria. I basically had to restart my tank, killed a bunch of sweet bloodfin tetras, or not bloodfins, uh, bleeding hearts, and a bunch of other, just cool fish. I killed a bunch of fish. It sucked because I cleaned my tank too much. Here's how you do it. You take the, you take the filter box, okay? You unplug it. You take out the pads. You get a bucket of your tap water. You rinse those out, all right? You can dump the gross water out of your, out of your aquarium. But you only rinse and you only clean, and you could you could run the filter pads under chlorinated water. That's fine. But you got to keep everything inside of it fine. Okay, you got to leave that all alone. You can rinse you can rinse the filter pads under water, whatever. You can get away with that. But then ideally you would rinse them in in tank in tank water. But you want to leave everything alone in that filter itself. And then when you kick that back on, you want to kick it on within 20 30 minutes 
30 minutes max because you want that water flowing over it because it's aerobic which needs oxygen so you need to have water flowing over this bacteria okay that's key all right don't power clean i hardly since then i hardly ever clean my filters like straight up like I got a filter on this 220 that's just so dirty. I think I can clean it for the first time in like two years. It doesn't matter. It's got the beneficial bacteria in there. It's doing me good. Filthy filters are okay. Do not overclean your filters. Do not take them all the way off. Do not power scrub them with chlorinated water. Chlorine kills beneficial bacteria. And beneficial bacteria, folks, is our friend. Talk about it some more here. It doesn't care what kind of bacteria. Keep your bacteria safe. Use tank water. Use dechlor. I'm rocking the continuum decor these days. Um, doing good. Doesn't smell quite as strong as Prime. It's intentionally made for less odor though. So yeah, good stuff. You know where to buy it. Um, so yeah, this is the this is the big thing. You can kill chlorine is made to kill bacteria. Okay, and it will kill your bio load. Another way to kill your bio load is with sick medication. Now. To be fair, you already screwed something up if you got sick fish, more than likely. All right, something's already down. So, like, metronizadol is the is the one down here. That is a blanket bacteria killer, too. So if you're dosing with that, you could be killing it. You could, you're killing whatever is killing your fish or whatever, but you're also killing the bio load. So you got to be careful with this stuff. Um, just sick medications are a problem. Like, you can end up killing a lot of fish. Uh, excuse me, killing your bacteria with this, okay? This is a big thing, so you got to watch this because it's like it doesn't it doesn't segment. It doesn't say, "Well, walk, well, I'll attack the fish, and then I won't attack." A lot of this stuff doesn't attack. And there's some exceptions. There's some brands that make some stuff that do this, but basically, this stuff's going to attack everything. Okay, and when it attacks everything, you could be killing your wonderful, happy bacteria that you need and love and like. This is a big one right here. I've been fortunate never to have a real big power outage. This is a power outage. What do you do when you have a power outage? The biggest thing you want to do is you want to make sure if your power's been out for more than a half hour, you want to unplug your filter because if the power comes back on, all of that bacteria that was in your filter is now dead. And then it's going to pump it all ammonia into your tank. And your tank is not going to be able to take that because your tank's bio load has probably been harmed as well. Probably not as badly, but probably harmed as well. And you're going to have a high ammonia spike. Ask uh, Steve Eady about this. He lost a bunch of ridiculous fish out in St. Louis. He says, unplug your thing. He said he had like a bunch of cool, like real fancy fish that he was able to save. But the ones that he forgot to unplug that were like his kind of like B-team fish or whatever. Dude's got a lot of fish. Um, he killed a bunch of fish. So during a power outage, unplug your filter. Okay. Everybody with me on that? I recommend getting a battery powered air stone. That would be ideal. You at least have some water flow and oxygen. Okay, everybody with me on this? Is this helpful so far? You guys digging this? You guys getting this? Everybody with me? Anybody? Good. Barry, good to see you on here. All right, so yeah, so power outages. Unplug your filter. Dump it out. It's it's done after a half hour. Okay. Moving on. How do we help our bio load? Okay. So. I recommend this to every freaking person, okay? Get an air stone for every one of your tanks, all right? I run an air stone in almost all my greenhouse tanks, and if I don't have an air stone, I have, like, water falling and, like, splashing and making a mess, okay? You want to take the dirty ammonia-filled water, and you want to bring it to the top of the tank where it can gas out. That was taught to me by Chuck Bremer. Watch Fish Room of a Legend, another dude that looks like Santa Claus. i got to get some beard action going on if I'm going to be this old school fish tank dude. But anyway, um, bigger, bigger, heavier set dude than Tori. Um, legit, he's got two-part video. You know, that's good. Taught me this. That It pulls it up and gases it out. So that's his first line of defense here. You want the surface of your water rippling. You want the gas exchanging. You want it all just flying out there. That's what you want. Okay, you want to have the surface of a rippling. You want water flow throughout the entire aquarium this goes into algae problems um i mean dead spots stuff you know like like water flow i could talk about for a while but i mean you want some water flow going all the way through there you gotta you gotta play with that output of your power head do it you gotta adjust your filter do it because you get dead spots you get algae on anubias you get algae and you get cyano i mean there's lots of problems associated with lack of water flow you don't need a lot but you need some okay 
water flowing. You want the water flowing. Okay, moving all everything around. You want to move it around. Bacteria likes water flow. Everybody get an air stone. Air stones are like six bucks, okay? Like the technology's there, it's cheap. Get one. Get two. How else do we do it? Speaking of Chuck Bramer, we add a ton of plants. How beautiful is this? So you add a ton of plants, your tank looks better, and it works harder for you. I mean, this is this is simple. This is simple. This is the key to success. Now, what I'm saying is adding a lot of plants. I'm not going to grow into like the growth of those plants on this webinar. Obviously, I'm a dirt guy. Plants absorb four to four hundred times more nutrients through their root. So you want to have that like thick. I always like to feed my plants at their roots where they eat, so they can grow like crazy and absorb all this extra nitrogen and, and nitrates and all that, and just have this happy tank. But get a ton of plants. Like get a ton of plants. And I'm going to talk about a ton of plants in a non-related, uh, a non like a uh, fish, fish that eat plants uh, tank here just towards the end. But yeah, get a ton of plants. Like get a ton of plants. Get duckweed. Get hygrophila. Get Amazon swords. I mean, do what you got to do. Get a lot of plants. A lot of plants, not a lot of fish. Notice how few fish are in here. Chuck Bramer's jungle owl tank. You think him and I are boys? <laughs> lots of surface bacteria with water flow over it. This is big too. Okay, you want your bacteria to have a lot of surface area with the flow going over it. Okay, now I now with the I run these big round uh, uh, sponges in my uh, 125s out in the greenhouse. I bought like Brian and I bought like a 12 pack of them. Put them in every tank. Just boom, 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 and they work fabulously they're also really good for uh breeding fish if you have like fry they eat all the stuff that grows on there so just a lot of surface area a lot of great stuff bacteria takes time to set up but i really recommend them my boy steve used to run the big sponges when he first set up his uh, discus tank because he had a big bio load on there and it was like in the discus were heavy he was heavy feeding the discus he wanted to grow so he needed that extra oomph in there and it looked like shit i mean it was sitting in the middle of his tank but it was it did him good and it was in there and his discus would did a nice job until they left not in the pond and they died, but whatever, another story. So we've got this, and then we've also got bio balls. Look, get creative. I mean, my man Joey's got a million videos, literally, about uh, bact like bacteria and bio balls and how to do your own DIY stuff. I should probably do a video on it, but whatever. Get some get some bio media. You can use Legos. You can use shredded up buckets. You can whatever you want to use. Get a lot of surface area and water flowing over that, and your bacteria will live, thrive, and prosper for you. Okay, so now I want to talk about from a high level balance. Now, this is like, okay, so there's a lot of factors going on here. So I'm just touching on a few of them and I'm going to go around the circle here. So the top thing is fish food. Um, I very seldomly feed anything but flakes. My fish would look better if I fed them blood worms. I had a dude in PA. Uh, I was like, oh man, I don't know why I got a little algae. I'm feeding bloodworms three times a day. Like, isn't that like, dude, you're throwing steaks in your tank. So like, I feed lightly, like not every day either. And rainbows, by the way, their diet prefers they don't get fed every uh, every day. They like a day off. Per Gary, don't carry Lang. So you want to do that. Um, just yeah, lightly feed. That's a big tip. Like if you can just reduce the amount of waste going into your aquarium, feed once a day. Like look, feed them when like feed them when you want to look at them, and then just know that you're putting something in there. Like I'm straight up, folks. I've starved quarry cats before. Like, not enough food's gotten down. Like, I've seen them. They look skinny. Like, I killed them. Didn't feed them enough. It happens. The ones I got from Peru, too, it hurts. But it happens. But I got a pretty clean tank most of the time. Speaking of my tank, you guys want to see it real quick? Is this helpful? Are you guys getting something out of this? This helping you? You guys digging this? Anybody getting this? You jiving with me? You want to see the tank? <laughs> I've been working on it. Hang on. Give me one second. This is hard. I've got a lot of things happening right now. Uh oh. One second. Yeah, that's my new side, by the way. I've been enjoying that.
Oh, webinar's over. Hang on. Notice, I'm using a timer. I only turn the timer and spin the timer. I don't turn the timer on. Okay. I'm making a mess. All right. So we're here. So let's go to the, let's go from we go from food. Let's go on to this monster tank at the top here. So if you told me, Dustin, I have a well, you said, forever. Like I'm just gonna tell you how I would do it. Like if I if you were like I'm like yo I'm gonna set up this monster fish tank and I'm gonna have a red tailed cat and two Oscars and a clown. A uh, clown knife and, and a gar. I'm gonna have this just monster fish. How would I do it? Well, first of all, um, I'd have a huge tank, but because um, these fish get huge. But I would also have a second huge tank, and that second huge tank would have a ginormous plant load in it with guppies in it, and I would have just like this monster, like huge, huge, huge refugium style tank with a ton of plants i'm talking hygrophila deformis jungle vow duckweed i mean just the, the 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 fast ones the ones that like you grow and you're just like boom 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 because that would do the work for me for some of the you still gotta do water changes but that would do a lot of work for me in the lower tank so i'd have them connected and i have this ridiculous planted tank which would be getting fed by all the waste of the other one so you could get away with having a higher higher fish loads because you got something working for you. Otherwise, you're doing water changes out the kazoo. Oh, I just messed up my nice clean floor. Whatever. So yeah, that's what I would do. So if you're rolling with that, and if you're like, dude, I don't have, I can't set up another tank on top. Take one of those pothos or one of the, you know, something, and put it in your filter and let it grow out the top. Um, I love the refugium idea though. But yeah, grow plants at the top. There's an entire thing called the aerial advantage. Basically, when a plant grows above the uh, water line, it can more readily uh, absorb CO2 from the uh, CO uh, carbon dioxide rich air so it can grow faster and then it can absorb those nitrates faster. So that's what I would do in a monster, monster tank. Uh, the balance factor, of course, being like how much are you feeding, how, how many fish do you have, like are they huge, you know, this is these are all factors that you can get out of balance. The other thing is the, the bottom one, dude doing, um, dude doing the work on this planet tank, like that's that's doing the work. Like, how much work do you do? Do you do the work? Like, do you take care of your tank? Like, are you doing the water changes? Like, you could have, you know, 15 red-tailed cats, but if you do 90% water change once a week, like, you're good, you're good, you know? Um, and I don't want to get into this uh, too much because it's, like, there's so many different factors we can break down each one of them, but I am going to talk about lighting. I run my lights for five hours, maybe six. I actually just, just now started increasing the... Uh, the lights. I actually was working on this, and I, I reduced the lights because I knew I was stirring everything up, and I didn't want to get it going. Um, so yeah, the lights. I run my lights six hours, but it depends on the intensity. It, you can't just pull one away because if you have like a high waste load and high light, you're gonna have algae. So there's these are these are some of the balancing factors. So that is 40 minutes of bacteria. What do you think? You guys get anything out of this here? Is this good? Anybody learn anything? Anybody get anything out of this? Was this helpful? Is this helpful for you guys? Learned a lot. Great. Cool. Thanks, Kathy. Love you. Cool. Good stuff. Cool. Loving it. You guys got a lot of it. You guys got a lot out of it. Cool. So just transition said substrate plant tank. Cool. Guys got a lot out. Great stuff. Great stuff. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Very review. What I know. Still super helpful. Cool. Yeah, that's a good. Thank you, Edward. Thank you. Cool. Learned a lot. Cool. You guys like this? All right. Cool. Okay. So, uh, how long after you set up a tank to introduce fish? I wait a month, Robert. Um. Okay. Cool, guys. So. So here we go. Um. You guys want more? First time webinar. You guys want some more? I got more. I got more. Cool. You got a little more. Stick with me here, and um, we'll uh, answer a bunch of questions at the end. So I got some more to share with you all. So, okay. So if you guys want some more, I'll share some more here. Um, here we go. First time webinar. First timers, welcome. I answer questions until about 9.30, so stick with me. 
Lisa Soja, um, Porous Rocks. Okay, so we go here. So when I was uh, at the Aquatic Experience, I met a guy named Oliver Kanat, and he said to me, uh, he's, 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 for those of you who do not know who he is, he is one of the world's best aquascapers, arguably the best in the world. Now Takashi Mano has died, and I'm fortunate enough to be giving him a ride back to the hotel after we set up a tank. Okay, no, I sat there and filmed it. He set it up. You guys have seen the video. And I go, who's the best aquascapers in the world? And uh, he goes, France. And if you guys know anything about history, thank you. You guys like that video. He goes, France. And uh, I said, France? And that's coming from a German dude. And y'all, you know, you know, you know going on there. And I was like, yeah, France. He says, France has a group. France has a group of very high level, the very high level aquascapers. And he goes, he goes, and he looks at me and he goes, in America, he goes, Americans, Americans and Germans have single fighters. And he had just like the most badass accent ever, single fighters. Like, I mean, and I can speak a little German, by the way. So his accent just, I wanted to kiss him. But single fighters. And that stuck with me. And 